Hi guys, welcome to another one of my YouTube videos on C++ programming. In this video I will give you a short example of what happens when you use static binding and when you use dynamic binding. Okay, Static binding is binding of functions to objects at compile time All right. uh, and dynamic binding is what happens when we bind our functions to objects at runtime. Okay, so with dynamic binding, when we actually invoke a function from an object at runtime, that's when a function is assigned to a particular object. Okay, um, when the when the uh, function is actually invoked. With static binding, all that stuff is set at compile time. Right, functions are mapped and there's no chance uh, for polymorphism to happen. Okay. Let me show you what I mean. All right, we're going to need two classes. Uh, we'll have a base class, class foo, okay. and it's going to have two functions in it. Okay. It's going to have a uh, call print function, okay. and all this function is going to do is call another member function within the foo object. Okay. So oh, print. Alright, and so let's have our second function here. Okay, and all it's going to do is print a string that says, you know, foo uh, print. It's just indicating which print function was actually invoked. Okay. Alright. So let's uh, now make our child class derived class and we'll call it bar. Okay, it's gonna have a public class access specifier. And it's child of foo. Okay. And so it's gonna have its own version of the uh, print function. Okay, and it's really gonna print a message indicating that it belongs to uh, the bar object. Okay, so with static binding, uh, what happens is that um, this print function is bound to this call print function inside the foo object. Okay, so bar is going to inherit call print function, but because of static binding, it's still going to call the print function in the foo object. Okay, there's no chance for it to be assigned the print function within the bar object, okay, because it's statically bound. All the stuff is hard-coded, if you will, uh, is set in stone at compile time. So there's no chance for us to use uh, the print function inside the bar object, okay. So let's look at that, let's see what that looks like, okay. Let's instantiate a foo object and a bar object, and then let's call the uh, call print function inside the foo object, and let's call the uh, call print function inside the bar object. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you'll see that um, even though I mean in the bar object we inherited the call print function, right? But it's statically bound. It's stuck to pointing at the print function inside the foo object. Okay. There's, there's no way to change that with static binding. Okay? Um, what we want, what we really want to have happen is that after we inherit call print, we want it to call the print function from the object that it's invoked from. Okay, So how do we do that? Well, we make the print function a virtual function. Okay, By merely adding this virtual keyword, we are invoking dynamic binding. And so this print function uh, in either object is going to be bound to call print at runtime when we actually invoke the function. Okay, um, not for it's not set in stone. This is part of the polymorphism aspect of classes. Okay, so now if I run this, we're going to see that because bar invoked the call print function, okay, at runtime, uh, print's going to be mapped to the bar function. And similarly, when we invoke the call print function in the foo object, then uh, 
the print function is mapped to it. Okay, so let's show you what that looks like. Okay, so there you go. All right. So now we have an example. Here's an example for you of uh, static binding versus dynamic binding. All right. So I hope that makes sense for you. Uh, if you're still unclear about it, feel free to shoot me an email or uh, stop by my office hours. And as always, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.